Okay, I think we're live. And <laughs> see, this is why I usually do my intro because it gets things set up. But uh, as I'm running late today, I thought I would just dive in and get stuff sorted, get straight into it. So what we're going to do today is a couple of things. First of all, we're going to um, work on adding some more courses to the How to Cope Well site. We're going to use YAML for that, and then we're going to and we'll time box that we'll probably do like half an hour an hour of that and then after that we'll switch it up and we'll do some bug hunting um, and we'll record some bugs in uh, in in github so let's crack on with the code I've just updated oh my Z shell let's um, get into here I'm going to need to uh, run uh, docker uh, Docker machine up or start, sorry. <laughs> ba -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. And um, yeah, should be good. Should be a nice, whoop, nice stream today. So what we're going to do is this, uh, this thing here, which is... Ah, uh, where are we? Where is this? Um, update course data fixtures to include all courses and fixtures and, and, and tutorials. So this is quite a large chunk of chunk of change to go through. If I had a look at the projects, I think I need to be on the uh, how to code well. Am I not on? Hang on a minute. Am I not on? What? I thought. Hang on. I thought. Uh, projects. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know why it's not linked. I, I've got no idea why it's not linked back. So it says it's linked here. But anyway, we go into the project. Um, and I believe I put them all down into here, into these um, these these tasks. So I need to convert them into actual issues. So. Um, Yes, so there's quite a lot of a lot of stuff to, to do here, although that's not specifically to the courses. The courses are this one, isn't it? Yeah. Did I put these in to-dos? I can't remember. I haven't done this in a long time. Maybe we shouldn't even be looking at this. Maybe we should, yeah. I think what we'll do is just pick, pick a random one and then just work through that. That's fine. Let's do that. That's all good. Um... Yeah, see, I don't know why it's not hooked up here, but... Okay, so whilst um, whilst that's uh, running up, let's do git checkout main. Let's do a git poll. Have I got anything waiting to be merged in? No, that's just off of uh, Dependabot, that's fine. Okay. So let's now, so what do we got here? We got some new config, some new fixtures, some new, and another a dump file there and some tests. This is stuff I was doing over the weekend. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's evaluate the shell. Good, good. Let's bring that up a wee bit so you can see. All right, let's now do a docker um, mm, 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 mm. so there's nothing in there that has changed apart from the database. Let's do a make um, well, let's do a git checkout hyphen B and let's change to a branch that we want to change to so um, let's go to the courses section let's see what courses are missing I think we've done and whilst that happens let's bring that over to here a minute and let's just have a look at uh Uh, 
just want to have a look at my playlists for a sec. Right, so we've got quite a few things to put in. That's fine. Right, why is this taking such a long time? It should be up and running. Hmm, skeptical on that one. Let's do a, um, a Docker PS hyphen A, what's running, what's not. That's running on port 80. All right, let's do a refresh, Docker Compose. Um, up hyphen D. Sometimes I have to do this. There we go. It just took a while. <laughs> okay, so these are the courses that we've got. Um, what we need to do then is find a course that we have. Um... Yeah, here we go. So this here is my um, uh, my YouTube playlists set of playlists here, my web development courses. So uh, ideally what I want is to have each playlist as a course, which it is, but have it on the website. So we've got HTML for beginners, Docker for beginners, MySQL, uh, MySQL console, Linux Bash for beginners, and Docker machine. So let's just pick on one. Um, a, a pretty small one to pick on would be the probably the PHP command line course. Um, yeah, all right, so I'm just going to view the playlist. So there is only three on there. That's fine. I believe I've gone and put in some of the code already. If I go to the controller and go into front end, nope, no, it would be in data fixtures and it would be in course fixture. Bear with me whilst I'm trying to remember all of this because it was a while. Um, these are the courses that are in at the minute. They're using the YAML files, but then these are the courses. Ah, that's the first course that comes up. So what I was doing was migrating away from PHP arrays into YAML, um, into a, a YAML setup. So what I need to do is essentially copy one of these and add in all the bits and pieces and then go through the tutorials and wire those things up as well. So, I mean, that's all good. Let's, um, let's do that. So we've chosen uh, PHP CLI as the course. So I'm going to get into here and just do, do git checkout uh, hyphen B um, feature and this is PHP CLI course. All right, good stuff. And we'll do, um, because the, there was a database change there, let's do make DB uh, test uh, rebuild, just to rebuild it all. So this will be running from uh, the new migration. I think there was a migration, not a migration, sorry. There was some fixtures, wasn't there, that were changed, these two here. So I need to, to, need to run those, which we have done. We're doing. Okay, so now I need to put in the the, um, the dev password, and uh, then we're away to the horses. Now I did find a, an issue over the weekend. For some reason, it's now it's outputting that. I think. Oh no. Oh no. Before it was outputting the part. Okay. Maybe it's just an issue with my version of P of um, the database. Anyway, whatever. I think it's my version of my SQL on my laptop and I'm on my Mac Mini at the moment. Anyway, I'll work through that later, that's fine. It seems to be okay. Let's um, just refresh the page just to make sure. So what I want to do, and we'll time box this, like I said, uh, I've been going for about probably 10 minutes. Let's time box this to, to uh, for an hour. So let's say, um, seven o'clock. All right. So what I need to do is go into. It's in config. There we go. In config. In fixtures. These are the new fixture files in the YAML thing here. I basically want to copy one of these. Um, we will copy this one. 
and we'll paste it in here if I'm if I can find the right key thank you and this needs to be the name of the course so this is going to be PHP CLI like so yes I would like to add it and then what I need to do is essentially um, basically copy things across so let's go split right and let's remove pretty much everything apart from that right so let's go to close other tabs let's just make a little bit of room for ourselves so this is the new um, YAML file that I need to adjust to make it look more like uh, this PHP array on the right that's fine it's important to keep things um, the same as in the IDs and stuff because these are used in testing so we've got to make sure that these line up okay so we'll run that whoops run that <laughs> no 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 this is where so this is where I've gone from working on a Windows machine to working on a Mac and I can't get my fingers in the right keys on the right keys all right so literally just jumping across and copying things from one uh, one section to the other <laughs> okay and the slug needs to be And what we'll do is we will run the tests after this because we because there are some things that rely on this fixture data. So we will. I mean, they might. They might. So subtitle. Do we have a subtitle? Oh, I've just changed that to be the description of mine. Silly me. Let's grab that. Wasn't looking what I was doing. Um. um, 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 um. Do we have a? We got a. Do we have a description? Yeah, we do. We've got a description down here. Yeah. I'm going to put a full stop in there as well. Okay, so that's yearly true, free, true. Uh, okay. So, okay, the image is important. And then we also need to put in the duration, or sorry, the created date. That's like a creation date. Let's just see what that creation date is on. Um, I've gone and removed it now, but I'm on, on YouTube. Um, 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 um. Trying to get to a part of. Yes, leave the page. Uh, trying to get to a part of the channel without it playing so I can show you what I'm doing no 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 don't don't play don't play don't play I just want to see all the things in the playlist view full playlist there we go all right so 2020 was when the playlist was created that doesn't help me at all uh, I'm gonna have to go into it aren't I Alright, let's take the first one. No, it doesn't say. There's no like meta stuff on there. Okay, bear with me. I'm just quickly press the off button. There we go. <laughs> Silence that. So it was August 22, um, 22nd of August uh, 2017 was when this this uh, this course was built, or this this tutorial, first tutorial in this course was built. So, uh, first of uh, let's right keep it to the first, and then August uh, is ten. There we go, because that changes the order. You see the default order. All right, so that's that done. So I can get rid of that now. And then what we have is the URL. That's fine. It's false, so that's good. Okay, so now we've done the disc. Uh, this stuff so now we can get into the lessons so the lessons are um, that's a tricky one isn't it lessons 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 I think I grab them from here ah notice that that's CLI basics so it's not actually this is so this is command line basics 
let's change that to be um, da -da 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 -da. let's refactor that a bit let's just do rename basics there we go okay so this is now the array of of tutorials and there should only be three there we go so we need to put these as lessons uh, here so let's move that out a little bit uh, yes so the first one is how to discover PHP features so we're gonna copy that just paste that into this bit here um, does it have a description yes it does let's grab that Okay, so then we've got, um, what do we got? Thank you for that PHP storm, I don't really care. Um, okay, so not right now anyway. So duration is 8.29. Yeah, I don't think I need to put in a zero. 8.29 and then premium video is, yeah, we don't worry about that. That's. Um, I will set that up later because the premium video is not available here. Free video URL though, that's, that's the YouTube jobby. That is correct. So we'll grab that, paste that into the that one. Okay, so that's looking good, that's looking good. Right, now the meta description is slightly different, I think. Da -da 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 -da. All right. So now the next one is um, obviously not making changes to the Docker image because that's the different course. So we copy the how to use the PHP interactive shell. Man, it was a while since I did this course, wasn't it? I'm, I, I do plan to, um, once this site's done, is to do a lot of refreshing on these things. Um, hence why I've called that basic, because I might be able to do an advanced course, who knows. Um, one thing that we're not pulling across is obviously the this thing, the course. There's no need because it's all part of one course. So this was used for um, uh, no, uh, the doctrine reference between the objects, but we don't need to, we need we don't need that. Okay, so that's that. Then we need the description, which is this one here. That's good. And then what else do we need? Uh, we need the time. 10 is that 31 31 10 31 we also need to have I've done the free URL description is needed now obviously all of this can get updated and changed in the CMS which is something that I'm definitely going to be doing you know when this goes live right so the CMS will be my single source of truth obviously um, but, and then we got the, t then the, then the, the last one. Um, but in terms of dev and testing, what I'm gonna do is use, rely on these fixtures. And what happens with these fixtures is they get, um, the database gets um, truncated and then, and re-imported, all the fixtures get re-imported um, once, um, on 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 each uh, acceptance and integration test and command test. Oops. Whoa, 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 whoa! Too many things going on there. Right. So then we've got. Um, let's see, we don't need this. That's fifteen hundred. 
Good stuff. And then we've got a description here. Have I already added that? No, that's the old description. What is time? Oh, we've we've done we've done quite well. We've done quite well. Uh, next is the meta stuff, right? So that needs to go in. So we might be able to sneak in another one, maybe. Who knows? I do need to run the tests, mind. They will take at least six minutes to run all the all the regression. So maybe. All right, that goes into there. Sweet. All right. So we don't need anything else. So that's 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 the last of it. So we can remove all of this because this is all to do with the old stuff. All right, and that's our YAML file. Um, and we don't need the premium stuff in there either. Let me just double check that. That is the same. That yep. Good. I think that's okay. So, all right. Let me just um, now think about the next stage for this because we've just added the YAML file in. What we should do is we should remove this file, but I suppose I should do that after I've ran the test just to ensure that everything's okay. This is our sort of backup, I suppose, at the minute. Um, but in terms of actually getting the fixtures running, what we need to do is get into course fixture here, um, oh, which I'm already in, and um, add to our array. And it needs to be the file name. So in this case, it's course underscore PHP, <laughs> PHP CLI, and it is basics. Sweet. So in theory now, if I can spell correctly, which I can't, um, <laughs> which I so can't, basics. Right. All right. So, in theory, what I need to do is run our lovely uh, uh, DB test rebuild because it it will go through our fixtures. So I run that. Hey, Homer. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining today. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good week. It's Wednesday tomorrow, midweek. Woohoo! Halfway through. And I'm super excited because I have, um, Murphy is my um, dog, he's a English Springer Spaniel, and um, he, we have just got him a new running harness. So tomorrow I am going to be running with Murph tomorrow morning before work. I am really excited. So tonight I'm going to, come on, we should have a course now here, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we should have a new course. So tonight, what I'm going to do is have a little takeaway to celebrate. Yeah, that went in. That went in. And we got the three and we got the, the times updated. Oh, this is looking so good. Let's just do a manual sort of check of stuff. Uh, and then, um, so after the stream, I'm going to chow down on some food. And then we're going to um, have an early night. I'm just going to put my watch on charge because it's beeping at me. Um... Have an early night, and then tomorrow morning we get up at um, half six and go for a nice run. Right, okay, don't worry about this stuff. I am working on how this looks, because it looks terrible. But the, the fact of the matter is we have um, this in play. We've got these tutorials. If I was to continue on as guest, we should, fingers crossed, see the three Come on, still it's still spinning. Well, fingers crossed, we should still see this. Uh, si we should see the the three things. The duration looks good. Eight, yeah, that's looking good. Um, there's no course notes yet, and there's no transcript yet. But if I was to click through these, I just want to make sure they all uh, wire up, and then what we'll do is we'll run. 
uh, how to use the interactive share, how to use, yep. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll quickly run the tests. It looks like it's going to be fine. Uh, how to, yeah, yep, yep, yeah, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Right, sweet, let's run those tests, shall we? Da -da 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 -da. So let's do a make. Um, let's just run and make tests and see what happens. So I haven't changed any of the PHP. Um, I tell you what, I'm feeling confident. Let's just kill this for a sec. Let's delete that file, the this one. Let's get rid of it because we don't need it anymore. Clear it out. It's a good way for me to um, keep a tab. These, I suppose, these are all the courses that I need to put in. Although they're they're done. Hmm. Maybe I haven't. Anyway, I'll, well, that's another thing for me to look at later. Um, what else can we do? We've removed that. We've removed. We've added that. What I could do is, yes, I could remove this from here because we've already added that in. Let us now run those tests. There we go. So this is going to run, um, what's it going to run? It's going to run PHP CS. It's going to then run PHP MD for mess detection. Uh, then it's going to run um, static analysis, PHP stan. I mean, I, I'm not see, I'm not thinking any of this is going to be um, negatively impacted on what we've just done because we've literally removed code and added some YAML instead. Uh, the the interesting stuff will be around the unit tests and the um, well, actually, the unit tests should be okay, but we'll run them anyway. Um, it's the acceptance tests that may have a little bit of a thing to complain about. Actually thinking about it, the test shouldn't be complaining at all. There shouldn't be anything to complain about because this is a essentially a new piece of content, and therefore there wouldn't be any tests hanging off of this. The, the test, yeah, that's right. Because I remember when I did this originally, what I was doing is being very cautious around the things that the tests rely on. Linux Bash for Beginners is one of those courses, and HTML, I think, the HTML course is another one. So I think we should be okay. But, let's just run them anyway. I haven't ran these tests in a while, not on this machine at least. I ran them yesterday on the... Uh, was it yesterday? No, the weekend, over the weekend on the Linux, on the on the laptop. Um, and as we've just... Um, oh, hello. Hello, what's all this about? I was going to say, because as we've, as we've done a, a git poll... And we've got new stuff in. This is an interesting thing. Cannot rename because the target exists. Why would you want to rename it? For better performance, you should cache that. Okay, that's fine. What? I haven't seen this one before. Cannot rename because the target already exists. Why would you want to rename dev? <gasps> oh, you would want to rename dev if... All right, bear with me if I think I know. I think I've gone and... No, that's fine. It's still on dev. Interesting. I wish that said what it wanted to change to. Just quickly checking over the Docker Compose file. That is looking okay. Environment variables look good. App ENV is set to dev, so what is going on here? That is something to do with the, it's running the uh, clear cache. And cache is in a shared container. So 
let's just get rid of my environment variables here we go so what I'm seeing here is that my cache folder is actually um, uh, a named volume dev cache I'm wondering if what I should I'm, I'm thinking maybe this is a, a docker thing so and I can see docker needs to be updated oh, great ah it's always docker let's um I'll tell you what what I'll do let's do a docker compose um, let's do a docker volume ls right there it is I am thinking what we should do is remove it and then recreate it and then run those tests again so let's do a docker compose down just to bring everything down I don't need to bring everything down but whatever Let's remove this volume, which is our cache volume. So docker volume rm the volume name. Off you go, bye bye. And then let's do a docker compose um, up hyphen d. That should recreate the volume now. Uh, so yeah, we are creating volume dev cache with default driver. Now then, let's do a make tests and see if that has fixed it. Essentially, that what what that would do is create a blank. Um, it would, yeah, it would. Let me just see. Is that bind mounted? It's bind mounted. So that's bind mounted, and then these go on top. So, unless there's a var cache dev and prod, okay, unless it's got an issue with the local version of cache. Anyway, we'll see, we'll find out. It failed on the console bit. I could have just ran that, to be fair, but whatever. In fact, no, let's just, let's just keep it running in the order it should be in. in. Let's not try and do anything fancy. After all, it is the end of the day. And we've got roughly 15 minutes ish left on this task. Don't really want to make it any worse. Okay, here we go. Here we go, fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. Come on. Come on. You know you want to. You know you just want to pass and, and everything's fine. Yay! Okay, so that did it. I have no idea why. No idea why I had to delete the volume and then and then bring it in. But hey, that's Docker for you. Sometimes things happen and it's like, ugh, I don't know. Restart everything. So now it's doing the um, the unit tests, which are I, I should all pass. Actually, all of this should pass. To be fair, um, but. I have upgraded to P to Symphony 5.3, and I have um, upgraded a bunch of stuff around the front end in, in the NPM world. So let's just run them. I'm I have to, I've ran all these tests before since all those upgrades. So um, and I know that they all work. So I'm not thinking that any of this is going to fail. However, what we just saw with a failure of the cache thing does make me feel a little nervous. So let's just run them all. There's no harm. It just takes a wee bit of time, that's all. So this is all the integration tests. So what this is what these tests are doing are um, 
They're doing things like checking whether I can get into certain areas of the code without specific permissions. You know, can I enroll again on a course that I've already enrolled in, that, those kind of things. And what they're doing is they're checking the database. So that's the in, they're integrating with the database in the sense of they're actually making database calls. And after each of the tests, it drops the data or it recreates the database at that given uh, dump version. That's why they're taking a little longer than the other than the unit tests. They are integration. They're testing the integration between the database, the ORM essentially, um, and uh, and the business logic. Whereas the unit tests were take were testing more specific parts or the singular units of a business logic and other logic. And then after this, once this goes through, it should run the command tests. So these are testing the Symfony console commands and they are relatively quick but again they do touch upon the database there's only three tests I think of, of those but we've got and then after that we've got our acceptance tests and they do take time because they are hitting the website the tests site like a user would and so properly rendering the page and checking for various elements on the page and stuff like that. So we're still running the integration. As you can see, there's a lot going on here. Testing things like the GitHub authentication, um, the user provider, the subscription plan, wherever it's saying repository, that's actually testing the, the database calls back to the RM. Like find by, find one by, find and what I've done is customized, got some custom queries running. Um, this is now testing the calculation of the end dates for uh, subscriptions. Very important tests. Uh, testing the profiler for the profile. Testing registration, that's all done now. So that's 171 of those. So now I believe it's going on to the commands. And uh, we've only got, oh, we got six. I thought we had three. Okay, we got six. Now I did a fix for this um, over the weekend because I was finding that um, every time I rebuilt the database the output of the commands were different because the console commands were looking at certain for the events, the stripe event queue report command there for instance was returning a report of all of the um, all of the stripe webhook events that have been captured into the database. Every time I reset the database those events would have a different created date, obviously, because the database would be recreated. So what I ended up doing was hard coding the created date so I have a nice fixed point in time. Um, because every time I rebuild the database, we would have a different uh, timestamp and therefore the, the order in which the output of those tests were different. And that wasn't good. So now we're running the acceptance tests. So these take a long time. As you can see, the amount of seconds there. Um, there's a lot of performance work I need to do on this site, as you can probably guess. But uh, what's happening here is we're actually doing a HTTP call, hitting the site as like a uh, from a from 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 the Chrome browser. It's, it's a headless Selenium test. These, um, so they're hitting the site as a a user of Chrome, the Chrome browser and then verifying certain things on the pages exist and you know there are specific user journeys such as registration logging in logging out um, enrolling on courses and then when you're there's there's tests in here for you know when you are logged in going to various places in your account now unfortunately because i'm running these tests these specific tests the acceptance tests um it is rebuilding the database for each one of these things so I can't actually touch the website which I've done before and it's failed miserably because when I change something in the in the database these fail um, so unfortunately we do need to leave these going I think what I'm going to do ideally what I need to do obviously is run these um, on a on a different um, on a different box essentially because <laughs> they are taking a bit of time what I'm going to do is uh, look at some code 
instead of looking at this sporing screen because there's 48 of those bad boys to do um, I am pro yeah let's get a commit going so let's bring up another shell let's see what we've changed so don't worry about the external code notes because that's um, a sub module we've changed the CLI basics and the course fixture and the database dump and we've deleted so yeah we've done specific things for the CLI course okay so git uh, commit minus am so this is adding PHP CLI course git push off you go that should go up to github now and the github action if I do a pull request on this one um, we might not be able to actually get it through today just because of time so let's um, can I become the reviewer no probably not uh, so new feature requests adding PHP CLI course so add that to myself put in the labels of enhancement projects milestone and we can see here that's all our lovely YAML that's what we did that's the external code notes that's fine yeah that looks good create a pull request and um, what's happening here is that the github actions are now taking effect and we should be hopefully running a build now yeah two builds one for building the branch, the feature branch, and one for building the um, into into main. Okay, whilst the, that sets off, what I'm going to do whilst that keeps going is I'm just going to pop downstairs uh, and just um, say hello to Murphy and get myself a drink. I think I will be back very very soon. I'll speak to you in a bit.
Ah, hello. Oh, that's the wrong screen, isn't it? <laughs> so, so far, so good. Everything looks good. And... In our actions, we can see that the feature branch has been uh, passed. And now what these do is um, they do the unit tests. They don't do the other tests because I would need to set up the database on the GitHub workflow. Which I can do, but um, why is that still going? I thought that was finished. Yeah. All right. Cool. I guess what we can do now is do a bit of bug hunting, I reckon. Do a bit of bug hunting. So let's have a look at the existing bugs that we have here. So we've got foot and margins are too big on mobile. List of lessons should be in, should be scrollable. Uh, pagination missing from courses. Uh, update course data fixtures to include all courses and tutorials. That's something that is ongoing that we're working through. Um, and then the live page not showing on the Twitch stream. So these are the known bugs. And then of course you've got a bunch of enhancements that I'm well get to. But what I want to do is find look at specific bugs or find new bugs and my new rule with this project is that if I find a bug whether it's a UI bug or well any bug to be fair if I find a bug in on the site I'm gonna give myself 15 minutes if I can't fix it within 15 minutes of finding the issue then I'm gonna chalk it up as an actual ticket because that helps reduce the amount of low-hanging fruit in the backlog you know um, the the volume of tickets because sometimes I find when you've got projects that have huge amounts of tickets it becomes unmanageable plus you don't know whether or not a ticket has already been um, created for what you found it might be written in a very different context but has the same outcome so I want to try and reduce the amount of bugs that I put into here but at the same time have a level of regression that I'm going through so if I find a bug give myself 15 minutes to fix it if I can't fix it then put it in the backlog um, because in my opinion if it takes the same amount of time to actually write the bug as a ticket than it is to fix the bug then you're doing it wrong you're wasting time I'm a one-man band so that's my my deal here okay so uh, what I was doing on switch on on Sunday was I was pretty much just focusing on a single page so how do we, what should we do? We were focusing on the, um, we were focusing on mobile. Maybe we should continue that. Yeah, let's do that. So let's go to more tools. Let's go to dev tools. Uh, let's go to, yeah, we're in mobile. We're in, uh, let's try. Have a look at the iPhone 5. Okay, let's pick up a page. So that's one of the issues that we were looking at last time. Let's let's just go through this. So let's click on price. Let's click on. Let's no. Let's keep on courses. <laughs> let's keep on course. Okay. So yeah, I can do that. That's fine. I can open and close. There is a bug here. There's a few bugs on mobile. Um, huge amounts of wasted space there. That needs to be in the middle. Um, there's a couple of issues that needs to go across. Yeah, let's mark this up. Let's chalk this up as a bug. So I am gonna find, come on. There we go. Find the right shortcut key. Grab that. And let's give myself 15 minutes to see if we can work this out. I think that's okay, having that like that. I want to have these in the middle. I want that going across. I want more margin 
there. I want these two in the middle. All right, what's the time? 1903. All right, let's give ourselves until about 20 past, shall we? Ish, that gives us a little bit more time. Let's see if we can work this through on mobile. So, let's do a little bit of CSS, shall we? Right, I can already see that that is an issue. That is one column there. That is another column there. That's not going to fly. Then you've got down here. Nope. I'm trying to find where that where these buttons are. These buttons are within this block. Right, so I need to separate those buttons. Right, let's work on those buttons first. Let's let's just say that the bug is putting these buttons in the middle. Because I think what we can do is have multiple bugs because there's quite a lot of failure going on here. So what I want on mobile is uh, these buttons to be in the middle and sort of in a sort of a flex boxy type thing, justified center. All right, let's find the page. I think this is um, uh, lessons. Well, we have to jump on onto another branch, right? So git checkout main. Let's do a git poll. I think I haven't merged that in. No, I haven't. Let's do a git checkout hyphen B fixes. This is lesson buttons. All right. So let's do a lookup for lesson is it lessons dot or lesson dot HTML dot twig front end lessons base hey, index there we go that's what we need let's get rid of this for a second don't need those don't need that we're looking for two buttons the two buttons are notes transcript title uh, is this is an a this is the display order title menu is it above this is it above that that's the width iframe hang on a minute that's not right this isn't the right page it is course dots uh, HTML dot twig it's course card courses my course uh, that's the CMS that's the front end it'll be that one so it would be yeah here we go these two the that's so that one yeah that one and that one. so what I want to do is just remove this from there and ideally I want to have this underneath the whole thing right so let's just find out where these divs finish that's the container at the there so it should be here so let's paste that in so div flex uh, let's do justify uh, center and hopefully if we did save so justify center if if the user isn't a um, if there isn't a, a user, or if there is a user, sorry, that would disappear. So that would be straight in the center, which is exactly what I want. So, okay, let's hit save on that. And then let's have a look and see what that looks like. And we're still running. Okay, I'm gonna have to kill these acceptance tests because I've switched the branch. <laughs> Never mind. Which I, I can't. It's, there we go. <laughs> That's better, isn't it? That's much better. And you can see it's wider. There we go. Okay, so that was fixed in 19 in in a in a handful of minutes. I like that. So let's do a git commit 
minus AM. Adjusting. Button position. So, I mean, you could kind of see this these issues as like subtasks on the actual I didn't actually copy that, did I? There we go. So whilst we're here, this really needs to be in the middle too. We'll keep on this branch, I think. Um, yeah, so let's see if we can get that into the middle. Now obviously we need to be careful about say putting this on iPad mode right so we've got to be careful with how this all looks that looks fine on iPad mode but in iPhone mode it's got too much going on here so what I'm thinking is maybe maybe what we can do it's around these whips isn't it maybe we can do MD so this is tailwind loveliness. So for for medium view, do a width of uh, two two thirds. There we go, sort of ish. <laughs> Let's also do an MD on here as well. So I'm just using it in the. Um, it's getting a bit better. Just playing in 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 this debugger thing. Uh, d development toolbar thing you would call it okay let's now work through the that image that image is that one so again let's do MD uh, is there a way I can hmm yeah it's, a, it's around the flex isn't it we did MD on here see this is where I haven't done this on a mobile first kind of manner see it looks kind of better but really I kind of ideally I want this to be underneath maybe so in that case that needs to be above I didn't time this, did I? Okay, let's let's say um, half past. And what I want to do on this one is I want to just adjust this so it's 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 fully across, and have some better padding above. So let's find the culprit. It's in here. And it's this, it's got padding bottom of four. Let's do padding top of four. That's much better. Yeah, that's much better. All right, so I'm thinking maybe we just deal with the image separately. What does this look like on iPad though? I mean, it should be okay because we've done the MDs and stuff. So yeah, it looks relatively the same. Uh, let's go back to responsive mode. Let's bring that up to 100%. The only problem with that is there needs to be... Well, one could argue, what's the point in that line? Is, is there actually a point to that line? If, if we just get rid of that line, is that going to make my life a little easier? Um, right, what's the point in that separation there? Where is that line set? I shouldn't be looking in here, should I? I should be looking in uh, here. border one. There we go. Let's get rid of. Let's get rid of that for a sec. I know we're moving on to the next bug, but let's just see. I think that's all right. 
Do I need to have the padding on the top? I'm, you know what, I'm happy with that, but, you know, I, I think that's alright. Let's have a look at what it looks like in um, iPhone. Yeah, I reckon that's good. I mean, we're only focusing really on this section here, and then I'll f focus on this section in a minute. And then obviously the image. So I'm saving the, the hardest thing for last. All right, so it's this bit in the middle, which is our... So what we did, let's try and recreate what we did. Uh, we did MD on, on these to say that, hey, this only works for medium screens. And then I'm sure we did something else. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, we removed we removed this, didn't we? The border. And I'm just, let me just refresh to this point here and see how bad it looks. No, um, PHP is certainly not an obsolete language. Where on earth did you hear that from? <laughs> not at all. It's, uh, it's paying for my mortgage. <laughs> and will do for many, many years. And has done for many, many years. Um, so no, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't think that PHP is obsolete. Um... Obviously, there are other languages to learn. Um, ah, it's that, isn't it? I don't know, that should have been... No, 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 it's the flex. It was the flex here. I think that needs to be MD. Flex, is that right? Yeah. And that is... Justify between justify center flex here. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't say use PHP for everything. Certainly not. Definitely not. Um, the further you go into the server, the, f the further you perhaps want more of a back end language. Um, that's good. That looks good. Oh, hang on, it hasn't fully refreshed. Yeah, no, that's that's getting better. And we've removed that um, that line. Let me see if that looks okay on iPad. Bring that back up to 100%. Yeah, that's looking good. Let's see what it looks like on responsive. Much, I think that looks much cleaner, you know? I think that looks much, much cleaner. Um, okay, let me work through. So that was done in um, in our time span. Okay, so let's time box another one for 15 minutes. What I would like to do in this 15 minutes is um, put these in the middle. So they're not quite aligned properly. Plus, they need to be justified, sort of center aligned. We all know how difficult center aligning things is, but not with Tailwind. Tailwind makes things a lot easier. So what I'm going to do here is find that out, which is here. So we'll time box this till um, quarter to uh, quarter to eight. No, we won't. Um, Twenty-five two. I reckon I can get that done in in here. So three of flex. I think it's this, isn't it? That needs to be. Well, let's do it from 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 here. It's not that one. It's that one. It's that. Yes, here we go. Right. So what I need to do Justify, I think it's justify center. No. 
Have I spelled that wrong? Justify center. Let's just see what that does. Is that going to do anything? Is that going to put that in the middle? That's what, I'm ca what I care about. No, it doesn't. Hmm. Oh, it is in the center. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. What's uh, what we what we need to do is we need to center each one of these things. I got it. Okay, so this needs to be text. Uh, text center. Text center and text center like so. In fact, I could pro I could pro oops I could probably make that a lot easier on me by just putting that on the parent container. Right. Hopefully, if I refresh the page, these should all be in the middle. Tell you all a language that I wouldn't mind. Yeah, that's looking much better. That's looking much better. Uh, let me see. I think I can tidy this up even more. Because you've got P2, P2, text Y. I, I, I think we could put all of this on the parent container, can we not? You know, there's no point in having styles around if we don't need to. It's always good to do a little bit of refactoring and tidying up. So I want to remove all of this. Oops. The padding, unfortunately, I think we're going to have to keep. There we go. No difference. Alright, so let's do that. Let's take out text white from each of these child contain ch uh, child boxes and put them on the parent. Oops. Good. Alright, let's now see what that looks like in iPad. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I think what we need to do is change that to be MD... Um, is MD because this is the resetter text left so by default it's going to be text center that'll be the mobile one and then it's going to be text left for uh, medium view and greater so let's uh, sorry let's see if that works So that should hopefully... No, why is that still... Is it because of that justify... Is it because of the justify center stuff? Yeah, all right. Let's take that off. Refresh. Let's bring that back to 100% so we can all see it. That's looking good. What's it like in, I in iPhone though? That's not so bad. That's not so bad. 
And I'm thinking maybe unlocked should have an image rather than, a, you know, the word unlocked, or maybe both. Okay, so yeah, we, we completed that within the time. That's good. All right, let's work on the, well, first up, let's just, just double check on responsive. Here we go, yeah, that's fine. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do now is work on the header, the, this thing here. I would like, that's not in the center. Can you see the big margin on the right hand side? So I want that in the middle on mobile view. On the iPad, I want that still to be there as well as on responsive. So it's only gonna be affected on small views that I want this in the, in the center. So we'll put some time on it. Again, another 15 minutes. But really, we could probably do this in in two. But um, where is that header, though? Ah, course title. Here we go. So what I need to do mobile first. So let's do text center, and then let's do our modifier, which is MD text left. There we go. Let's hit save. It's much the same as this. Let's refresh. So that should now be in the center. There we go. That's looking much better, isn't it? Let's now change this to be iPad. That should go back to the left hand side and obviously on responsive, that should be the same as well. So go back to iPhone. Good. Now I'm thinking I can do a little bit of more refactoring here because we've gone and put text center and MD text left there and here. And I'm thinking we could just probably put it on our container, the container of the things. There's nothing else in this box, is there, apart from the subtype? Ah. Okay, maybe we can't do that. Alright, fine, never mind. It's either create another div or a section or something and then put those two in there or just, you know, have these in there. That's fine, I'll just leave it as it is. That's, that's all good. Ah, right, let's just see where we're at with everything. So. This is a bit of a challenge, isn't it, the image? Um, ideally, the, the image should go there. Or, you could argue that the image should be hidden on mobile. And only seen on iPad and... Um, and... Uh, larger views and just not seen at all on the iPhone because it's quite long like it's quite high so that would be yeah it would basically be at this I don't know maybe uh, I don't know I don't know maybe I'm just saying that just so I can get rid of it <laughs> get rid of the problem Actually, no, I think I would like it, it there. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure how I would manage that. I, I'm not sure. And I think this is going to take... Let me, let, me, let me commit the code. Adjustments to... Um, mobile course page alignment let's be a little specific push that up so all these pushes that I'm doing they're firing off um, github actions to test retest the branches right I think 
I'm going to mark this up as a bug because I don't think I can get this done and I need to I need to get my dinner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this and take a screenshot of the iPad because essentially the iPad is correct there's a little bit of this there's, there's a lot of height to fix on there but we'll worry about that when we specifically go for the iPad as a as a as a means of testing but the point is that I want it to be in uh, on the iPhone I want that image to go up there <laughs> how I do that I don't know but um, I certainly need some food so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chalk this up as a bug so on issues we're gonna go create a new issue it's a bug report we we're going to assign it to myself as I am the only developer on this. It's a UI. It's a bug. The project is the current project. The milestone is... It's going to have to be Q3, unfortunately. Uh, code issue. Okay, so mobile... Uh, so it is course image on mobile view is in the wrong position. Now, um, move the image, uh, move the course image, let's be a little bit more specific, course image. Um, so it sits between the course title and the course what have we got under sorry going all over the place what I can't now the question is do I want it there or do I want it there my feeling is I need it there and then these sit underneath because that's how it'll look so it'll be there so yeah Let's do course title and course. Let's do meta info. If I was to say metadata, then it would probably confuse me when I come back to this and go, what? What am I talking about metadata for? Um, right. See screenshot for positioning. Right. Let's go and create this screenshot. So I've just gone and created a on the desktop here. Hang on, are these? No, they're not in date order. Is it that one? Yeah. That is the correct view. Okay, so we need to also say keep the current positioning for um, medium and large screen views. Okay. So that's that one. There we go. Right. So let's see. Now I did this the other day, didn't I? Editing these things. I've got to try and remember how to, how I did it. We've got arrows. We do have arrows. Uh, can I? I can bend it. Ooh, look at that. All right. So basically, I want that. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not what I had in mind, sort of there. I think that's explicit enough. Good stuff. Right, let's um, let's move those on. So there's that one. 
and I believe there's the iPad one, which is that one. Can we preview the, this? Yes, there we go. So that goes there, and then that's the iPad. So can I just, just for clarity, mobile view, iPad view. Okay, sweet. And what I'm going to do is just leave that there um, and we'll pick this up in our normal sort of regression style bug fixing stroke testing stages. Awesome. Cool. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'm going to go and grab a takeaway. Happy coding, everyone, and I'll see you again soon. I hope everybody has a great evening. And um, I'll be on the podcast on Thursday evening at 8 o'clock here, live once again. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs>